Hello, my name is Ralf Rettig, and I will be talking to you today about simulating the equilibrium and kinetics of steel making using the Thermokalk process metallurgy module. I work, work for Thermokalk software. And before we get started, a few words about the company itself. Thermokalk is a well known company developing software databases and nowadays also material models in all kinds of areas where thermodynamics and kinetics are of importance. The company is based in Stockholm, Sweden and has nowadays subsidiaries around the world. There is a number of modules built around the core product, uh, Thermocalc being a Kalfat solver, but today we will focusing on pro the process metallurgy module. First, I want to talk about um, it's just equilibrium calculations in steel making using the process metallurgy module, then about kinetics in steel making. And finally, I will give some application example with different calculating different aspects of an industrial ladle furnace. The thermocalc process metallurgy module is uh, built as being a framework for modeling the liquid steel making processes throughout the process chain. And this is all based on Kalfat calculations using the thermodynamic database TC Ox. So the target is really that you can uh, model everything in the liquid phase. So starting in the liquid phase of the electric arc furnace, going over the blast furnace, uh, different the different converters like BOF or AOD, uh, and then finally all the way to the ladle furnace. The basis of everything is the database TC Ox. And this is a database that has been now developed for over 15 years. And it's uh, the goal in this database was to unify the description of steel and slag in one database. So you only need one database and have all the steel and uh, all, the, all the relevant steel data and the slag data. The database is containing right now these elements that you can see here. So it's 29 elements covering all the relevant areas uh, for steel making. And while it is a very important application is steel making, this database is not only for steel making, it can also be used for refactories and also for other oxidic materials actually. And you see that already um, between 2018 and 2021, there's been quite some shifts. So we had here uh, in total uh, major versions 8, 9, 10, and 11. So four major versions in these three years. The basis is, of course, and that's the core of any Kalfa calculation to perform equilibrium calculations. And uh, this is very much simplified in a process metallurgy module compared to the uh, thermocal console, you can do all these equi uh, equilibrium calculations for steel making also in the thermocal console, but it's actually much more complicated. <clears throat> and this is especially because of the description of the slag phase. So you have slag is of course consisting of different components. So it's an oxidic material uh, usually. And in the console, it's rather tricky to define here these, the percentages of the different components. But this is very simple in the process metallurgy module, which is right now um, only existing in the graphical mode. And then you can define your compositions as you see it here in a very intuitive way. And you can even store these compositions on file and uh, build up a library and reuse that. So the focus was here on a simple and, and intuitive uh, graphical use and type paste. You can do both adiabatic calculations, so assuming no, um, no heat loss from the system and constant temperature calculations. There are very many applications where you can actually use already the pure equilibrium calculations. I can't go through them all, but just to mention a few of them. So you can, for example, calculate the sulfur and phosphorus content in a steel dependency of temperature slag amount the composition or you can calculate the soft oxygen content in the steel after the deoxidation. Uh, you can calculate which kind of inclusions are occurring and also how you can modify these inclusions. 
and many other things. Steel making is, of course, some um, technology which is quite seldom really in equilibrium, and therefore it's important to model kinetics. And at the same time, it's also important that we keep a certain performance. So it should still be possible to apply these applications really in industry. And the way we do this is that we are implementing an effective equilibrium reaction zone model. So that, that's a modeling technique which has been around for quite a while now. There's quite some uh, literature existing. And uh, even I would say even before this model got this name, it even existed even longer in the literature. So that traces probably around 20 years back, I would say. <clears throat> the thermochaic process metallurgy module is more to be considered like a framework, a tool for building models for specific processes. And you can build models, for example, for processes like the ladle furnace, BUF, AOD, or H process, electric arc furnace, or even the blast furnace, at least the liquid part. <clears throat> but you need uh, for each of these, so it's, there is no fine, no, no, no models directly for usage in the software. We have different examples for different processes like uh, ladle furnace, BOF or AOD, but still uh, you will need to tune them for your actual process and maybe need even to change them. And generally there, because in the steel industry, there's basically a unique furnace in every plant. These models need in any case to be uh, tuned. So I have no time now to explain in detail how an effective equilibrium reaction zone model is working. But this slide here is showing a bit how the general principle is. So the main idea, as the name says, is that we're having different, we're modeling our system by different zones. So in the most simple case, like here, we're having just a slag zone on top and we have a steel zone down here. And these two zones, steel and slag, they can react through a small, to, through a surface here, which is then having a, a certain uh, a volume. So it has a certain thickness. And this is then this actual reaction zone. So we have two, bulk zones here and one reaction zone in between. The size of the, this reaction zone is determined by the uh, kinetics of this process. So this is the, the actual main parameter here, the mass transfer coefficient between the zones. And this is determining on the process kinetics. This in itself wouldn't be too much and not too useful. What we also need here is that we have to have the ability to have additions at any time. We need to have the ability to have heating and heat loss heat transfer through this uh, through this reaction zone we need to consider flotation of steel to slag zone or maybe even uh, transfer of material in the other direction we need to consider inclusion formation uh, and, and so on and this is here all what is available in the process metallurgy module for details about this model i suggest that you take a look into the literature there is a lot of literature around uh, of different research groups and they give all details that you can think about. Right now, this is also available in the graphical user interface. And generally the uh, user interface is looking quite similar to the equilibrium calculations. And the main goal was here also to really allow for a simple setup of calculations <clears throat> so that it's intuitive to do that. At the moment, we are developing a TC Python module, and this will then allow for programmatic uh, setting up of the calculations. And this will even allow, if, if you do the, this work, to couple this maybe to your level two systems and to drive calculations from there. <clears throat> now, I will talk about some application examples. So the, we are looking now on an industrial ladle furnace. And this, we will look on this uh, process from different point of view. So first we will do some equilibrium calculations and then actually full process simulation. We are using here some published data from an industrial plant from ArcelorMittal de Fasco in Hamilton, Canada. This has been published uh, several times, so last times to our knowledge from Van Ende uh, and also 
originally here from Graham. We're using, doing that uh, because it is otherwise difficult uh, to show public data from industrial processes in a conference. And therefore we are using this now as a basis. So all the following slides, all data you see, there will be always based on these publications. The composition of the steel as it is published here is initially like this. And the top slag is having initially this composition. And we're having here 165 ton uh, steel in the beginning. So the first aspect we want to look on is the oxidation uh, happening during the tapping. And we're just looking here now on the oxidation. So aluminum killings or deoxidation with aluminum. And we just do this here by doing adiabatic equilibrium calculations, which is always a good thing to start because they are more simple to set up. So we see here now what is happening to our steel when we are adding different amounts of aluminum. So from zero to hundred kilogram. And then we can observe here how the oxygen content in the steel actually is changing. This is what we want, of course, to reduce in our killing process. And uh, we could use now this, this diagram that we have calculated to design uh, our actual addition. So we could look which is the target oxygen content we want to achieve, and then uh, read, uh, read here how much aluminum we actually need to add. At the same time, we see also the how the aluminum content in the steel is evolving and how much of uh, oxides we are actually forming. So corundum in this case, aluminum oxide. And as this is an adiabatic calculation, we also can observe here the influence um, of the heat generated by this exothermal reaction. And we see that here, there is some actually some temperature increase on this big steel bath, which is still rather small, um, also because we have already here relatively small amount of oxygen in the beginning of uh, the process or the initial steel composition as already, according to the literature data is relatively low. Going one step further, the desulfurization is, of course, an important uh, target in a ladle furnace process. <clears throat> and we are now looking as a first step here again, or just some equilibrium calculations uh, to give a, have a feeling of the overall global equilibrium that we can reach in such a process, even though only after some time. And uh, one important aspect here is always the influence of the iron oxide, which is coming by slag curry over from the electric arc furnace or the BOF. And we are just looking here now on two different iron oxide contents. So low iron ox oxide content, 1.9% and a high being 10%. And we are uh, drawing here now the sulfur content in the steel melt in equilibrium in dependency of the silicon dioxide content in the slag and the aluminum oxide content in the slag. And generally we see that we have very high values of so 600 ppm of sulfur here in this upper section. So at high aluminum dioxide, uh, aluminum oxide and silicon dioxide content. And we have the lowest values down here at yeah, around 25% aluminum oxide and a bit of silicon dioxide. And while it is in principle general for iron oxide, we can see that everything is shifted here to the left. So the lowest content area with 10 ppm is smaller and it's more to the left. Now it's not only about um, the sulfur content in the steel, but we also need to maintain actually a liquid slag to have a good reaction of the slag. And we can overlay that. So we calculate now also the liquid slag fraction. We see generally here in the left corner, we have very low, so mostly solid slag, very low fraction of liquid slag and it's going to 99, so basically 100% up here. And if we are overlaying this now, we can um, go find a target region. So where we have low sulfur, the lowest sulfur content, but still having liquid slag. And this is basically here in this region. So we are having here um, below 10 ppm, but still basically fully liquid slag. When you're looking now on the high iron oxide, then it's a bit different. So this point is shifted more to the left to lower aluminum dioxide content. And we see here, we cannot even reach the, uh, the 10 ppm anymore. So we will be maybe around 20 ppm instead of maybe 8 ppm here at a different slag composition. Uh, 
So that's one way that these calculations can be used. Um, but we are not only interested in, in equilibrium, of course, because that's something which may be never reached. We're also interested in the process kinetics and we can do this with the process metallurgy module. So here we see now the same steel and the same ladle furnace process um, in a kinetic simulation with this schedule. So that's a rather simple schedule, uh, but we can also calculate actually much more complicated ones. And we see generally a nice uh, fit for the temperature evolution over time compared to the measured data. We see also a nice fit in the steel composition over time and the slag composition over time. And I want to draw your attention, especially here on the sulfur content, because that's something which is heavily influenced by the kinetics. We see here it's uh, reduced all the time during the process and would even reduce further in the, if the process would be longer. And we see here that we even here get actually quite nice fit. So to sum up, uh, the thermokite process metallurgy module allows for the simulation of full-scale industrial steel liquid steel making processes. So you can, in principle, model any steel making process here when you build up your model as a simple and intuitive interface. Right now, only a graphically used interface, but we are actively working right now on developing a TC Python module, and this will simplify very much. On the one hand, batch calculations, so to vary parameters. Uh, to vary compositions and to calculate for many um, many processes at the same time or in a batch and, at, and it will also make it much more easy to configure complex process schedules and you if you want you can couple this to your databases and this will be also a major benefit so finally i uh, want to express that we are not declaring any conflict of interest with that, I thank you for your attention and I hope for a lively discussion. Also, we are doing this now all online. Thank you.